Hey everyone, I just come from a day out. Um, it was really nice. I had my first vegan meal, like entirely vegan for the first time ever, and it was really, really good. It was, of course, it was vegan junk food, but yeah, I had my vegan meal for the first time ever. Um, I'm starting to have dissociative episodes. It's not getting really, really bad yet, but they're getting there. And today, what I ended up doing was, because I was doing a new moon ritual, right? And, you know, as is part of the course with me, I was doing my new moon rituals and I usually do them in the morning. I'm supposed to do them at night, but I did them in the morning because that's the best time to do it. So I did my new moon rituals in the morning and it was then that all kinds of unpleasant thoughts started to come into my mind, like past traumas and, you know, it was slurs being thrown at me and stuff like that. So every time they came into my head, I would practice martial arts punches and kicks that I'd been practicing for years. Now, I'm not good at martial arts, but I remember a few moves from when I learned um, a martial arts discipline, right? So whenever I heard something in my head that I didn't like I would channel it physically and I put it into physical punches and kicks and the thing is it really helps like like exercise it really really helps you to get out of your own head and kind of into your body so whilst I was having those episodes today I used those punches and kicks and I channeled my channeled my um my overload into something physical but it's starting to it's starting to wear down on me a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. Between these fucking kids upstairs trying to make entertainment out of bullying me every day, and I mean almost every single fucking day, between that family's you know constant machinations, trying to like trying something or other, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I don't even care anymore between all that for the last few months and this gang stalking situation that's basically involving like pockets of the community all over the place and you know everything to do with the council and the landlords and you know and just money problems well I actually haven't had any money problems not not big ones anyway and just everything is just getting on top of me like and the thing is is that I realize why when I get in a familiar familiar situation if I get in a familiar situation I start dissociating the reason for that is that when I'm in a more high stress um situation than this and I'm in a more high octane situation than this. I'm completely like, I don't dissociate. Um, I don't get any of that. I don't dissociate. I don't lie down all day. I'm not depressed all day. And it's not because me being constantly active is necessarily a healthy state for me to be in. It's because when you're in high stress and high activity, your body is in emergency mode. So basically, (coughs) your immune system your cortisol levels your dopamine levels like when you're in a high stress situation everything is working extra hard to keep you above water that's why it seems like people do better in high stress and high octane situations than they do in less stressful ones but what's actually happening is that during those high stress and high pressure pressure situations you're actually being depleted. So by the time it comes for you to actually relax, take some downtime, that's when all the illnesses come out. I'm at a point now in the abuse because it happens, it happens every time. It happens every time. There's a point where the stress of the gang stalking and the stress of the electronic torture, there's a time where I start getting used to it. And there's a time where it doesn't affect me as badly as it once did. 
there's a time when I get used to it. And it's usually at that time where the dissociation comes along, <coughs> where I might even start getting physically sick. So all of this, everything that's happening right now, what seems to be a negative situation when it comes to me is actually a sign that things are actually calming down around here because they are. This is the thing. I'd been in a really, really high pressure situation like for the last few months now with everything that's been happening here. I've been in like in a really, really stressful situation, a stressful place. But now everything that my body was suppressing, it's, it comes out <coughs> when times are relaxed. And people are thinking, oh, well, that's a sign that we need to keep abusing her in order to keep her efficient, because that's what people used to think when I was younger. People used to think that they had to keep abusing me or keep me in a bad mood or keep me unhappy in order to keep me efficient, keep me doing my homework and stuff like that. But the truth of the matter is, is that it wasn't a sign that I was built for high pressure situations. It was actually a sign that I wasn't handling it well at all. Because my thing is this, right? If you're suppressing so much during a high stress situation that as soon as the pressure's off, you know, you start having problems, then that's the sign that you're actually suppressing a lot and that you, you, you've actually been made very very ill by your situation it's just that you were suppressing those things whilst you're going through the high stress so that's what's happening to me now it happened to me in a hostel like on a lesser degree but that's what's happening to me now like you know since things are calming down or since i'm getting used to the situation now you know the dissociation is increasing now i'm fucking coughing all over the place like now i'm cold all the time because of my anemia like all the stuff that my body was suppressing is coming out now because I'm used to the situation. And plus, again, things are calming down over here. They're not, they're not as they're not as rampant as they used to be. You know, if anything, I think what's got actually going on is that if I make any noise or if I make any lives, then reports are being made in order to exaggerate the like the levels of danger in a situation where there are no levels of danger. We're literally in the middle of a pandemic, economic downturn, and World War Three. Like, you know, we've got bigger things to worry about. This is absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things. So, <coughs> so everything is calming down, but it's like, that's exactly why it's, it's you know, it's not good. This is the thing. Me dissociating, anybody to dis for anybody to dissociate, for anybody to dissociate would normally, it would be like, that's a sign your mental health is getting worse. But no, it's actually a sign that healing is actually taking place. When I'm able to recognize what's going on and not so much nip it in the bud, but kind of work through it. That's when, you know, you actually start to realize, well, if I start, if things start calming down to the point where I've started dissociating and shit, it actually means, I can't believe I'm saying this, but if the, okay, let me put it this way. If you're ill and people can't see it, that's bad. If you're ill and people can't see it, that's bad. But if you're ill and people can see it, it means that your body is clearing that stress and clearing that gunk out of its system. So the fact that I'm dissociating now, it's not a sign of me deteriorating at all. It's actually a sign that healing is taking place, that I'm getting used to my situation and that what I need to do from here on in is basically channel, not, not try to stop my dissociating, not try to work through it. Well, work through it, yes, but not try to, don't try to block it, don't try to suppress it, but channel it physically so that the overload has somewhere to go. 
that's one of the reasons why I like making videos is because if I'm if I'm overloaded by like stimulation and I'm going to be honest with you right if I'm a single person and it's very very obvious I've got borderline personality disorder and then on top of that I've got hormonal issues and then on top of that there's a very very strong case strong possibility that I might have mild autism combine all of those right <coughs> you have to imagine a young family even even if that young family is not bullying me that's overloading me every single day even without them bullying me, even without them trying to make sport out of my anger. That's literally overloading me, like every single day that's overloading me. So if I'm being overloaded like that, if I'm being overloaded like that and I'm not dissociating, that means that that stress hasn't left my body. But if I start dissociating, it means the stress is leaving my body, but I need to find a positive way to channel it so that it, I can actually be free of it or I can actually manage it properly. So this is the thing that I'm talking about. When you're, when you're ill, and especially if you're ill and you're being tortured, like if you're being physically tortured, as a targeted individual and you're being psychologically tortured on top of that because remember repeated bullying for this long it can damage somebody's nerves remember it can damage somebody's nerves so repeated bullying for this long it can damage someone's body so basically for, for anybody to be bullying anybody that long that's fucking grievous bodily harm right there okay so when you're sick and going through psychological torture and directed energy weaponry torture, when you're going through this and you end up sick because of it, the thing that you have to remember is that with people like me, this program is for life. And the crux of this program is to affect your psychology. So that is where you really have to focus nutrition is very it's is very overlooked the nutrition angle is extremely overlooked but it's the psychology part of being a ti is also incredibly overlooked because the whole point of the torture in the first place the whole point of the sleep deprivation the whole point of the dehydration of your body the whole point of of attacking certain points in the body that activate hormonal that activate your hormones all of this is designed to keep you to you know to always have you on a pendulum and to never have you steady if you are always kept slightly off kilter then according to the people who are doing this for social and behavioral social and behavioral experimentation that always keeps you a little bit off center so getting to know yourself as a targeted individual psychologically is incredibly important. And knowing how your feelings operate is incredibly important because it, that could literally save your life. That could literally save your life. Because remember, this program is designed to slowly torture you, not even kill your body, but kill your spirit. So coming to, com coming to grips with your feelings about... Having to live in two realities at the same time, this fake world that everybody else is creating and the real world where there's trafficking going on. Having to kind of, you know, in the real world, well, not only is there trafficking going on, but it's connected to social control. <laughs> like there's two realities in your head at once, which has nothing to do with illness. So you have to navigate that. And then on top of that, you've got to navigate physical torture. And on top of that, you've got to navigate psychological torture, all of which erodes your body and damages your body over, over time. So you've got all of this shit to deal with. But it's all about how you feel about what's happening to you. That's why with me, I'm always focused on the psychological aspects of this. 
because the truth of the matter is it's always going to be about how you feel that is what we're manipulated through our feelings why do you think the psychotropic weapons are there why do you think that why do you think our hormones are being attacked why do you think our bodies are being dehydrated our memories and traumas and things like that not stored in the water in our bodies come on think think it's all about emotion all of it so if you can understand your feelings and you can understand how they work <coughs> and be patient enough to work through them it can help you lead you know a more fulfilling life it's it's not an easy one it's hell but you can still have a rewarding life like within this fucking hell like you can do it it's just a matter of understanding your psychological impulses and how they affect you and how they might affect your environment and how they might affect you know your day-to-day -day life these things are incredibly important to know that's why if I'm dissociating or if I have symptoms that are familiar with my illness that are cropping up and might threaten to make my environment worse I'm like okay what's really happening here so every time I have a feeling I examine it because remember, there's not just my illness to navigate. There's also psychotropic weapons. There's also remote neural monitoring. There's also <clears throat> directed energy weaponry. There's also acoustic weaponry. Like, And plus, there's also gang stalking and street theater and constant unlawful surveillance. There's all of that to consider. So you have to kind of... <clears throat> check in with yourself every single day to see what's going on and the thing with me is that the reason I do it publicly is because as a targeted targeted individual the worst people in the world know my secrets anyway this way I get to make sure that the the secrets about myself the things that I'm ashamed of the things that I wish I could change the the worst people on the planet are not the only ones who know them that is my strategy i've said it before and i'll say it again that is my stra strategy i don't reveal everything but i make sure that i reveal everything in strategic ways so that people know what the truth actually is rather than having this narrative painted of me by people who are invested in destroying my life so being honest with yourself, being as vulnerable as you can and <clears throat> keeping in touch with your feelings every day, it's not an easy thing to do because we're taught not to do that. We're taught not to be touchy-feely, but being touchy-feely can literally save your life. We're taught not to be emotional or touchy-feely or none of that, but that can save your fucking life. Don't underestimate that shit especially if you're a marginalized person that can save your life. Knowing how you work emotionally and knowing how it is so important. It is so important. <clears throat> so when it comes to me with the dissociating stuff, I know that my illnesses are coming out now that the situation is settled. But I also know that That having a grip on it doesn't involve trying to control it. It involves understanding it. And taking everything that I have been through and continue to go through into account. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um not fun but it's just one of those things that you have to kind of live through i mean with the dissociative episodes the truth of the matter is is that they could they could probably be triggered i mean the cr1 part of the brain if that's that's aggravated enough and it can be aggravated by electronic weapons electronic weapons have definitely been fired on my head so the cr1 part of the brain could definitely be triggered it can definitely be you know they've been firing at my frontal lobes so there's, who's to say that the CR1 part of my brain can't be damaged already? It's very easy to synthesize psychosis with electronic weaponry. All they have to do is fire it in the right place. 
So I have to navigate that. But again, coming to grips with your feelings as a TI is going to be extremely important to you. It's probably even more important than the physical stuff because once you get a grip, on how your emotions are, you know, how your emotions are manipulated and how that affects your behavior, how like your emotional responses to things like pain and pleasure and understanding all these things, it can actually set a more solid foundation towards more physical solutions like you know, like engineering, like, you know, frequency, frequency stuff, like stuff to help the frequency situation. Um, I'm being vague for a reason because I don't want to reveal too much yet. But, you know, knowing who we are emotionally is the key to knowing who we are physically and knowing how to, you know, knowing how to, emotionally connect to our experiences properly is what helps us to properly solve the issues that are in front of us so when I'm dissociating I'm honest about it when I when I go through certain things I'm honest about it I don't hide it because at the end of the day hiding it it doesn't help anybody but the gang stalkers oh So, yeah, the karate stuff that I was, well, it wasn't karate. They keep calling it karate. I don't know why the perps keep calling it karate. It's not karate. But, um, you know, the martial arts stuff that I was doing during my ritual, I was reported for that. That's what, I, or at least that's what I heard anyway. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. But it's just, it's just like this is what happens so perps get into a certain situation where they're hired to bother me and then when things don't work out in their favor and their conscience starts biting them they turn they make everything about themselves and I'm like after you know after so it's been it's November to what March it's been four, almost four solid months of racism, of mental health slurs, of bullying. It's been almost four months of this shit. I don't even want to think about you. And the thing is, if, if you're going on my lives and listening to my lives on your fucking tablet, because I know that's what the fuck you're doing. If you're going on my shit and listening to my shit and showing everybody my, my social media, if that's what you're doing, then, you know, you should know by now through my interactions with you that if I wanted to threaten violence, I would have just done it. And not only would I have done it, I would tell everyone. Not everything is about you. There are times where I don't even want to think about you because the thought of you is literally nerve damaging my legs get weak every time I come home you literally damage my fucking nerves you are damaging me physically your presence is physically damaging and I'm I don't even think I'm the only one you're damaging I don't think I'm the only one you're hurting I don't even want to think about you and yet you are obsessed over me because your conscience is biting you and who else are you going to tell that you are part of a behavioral control initiative masked as community policing? Who the fuck are you going to tell? Really? Of course your conscience is biting you. And of course you're fucking scared. And especially knowing that that social and behavioral control that you've been engaged in through your psychological torture of me has wider consequences. You're, da- you're out here damaging people's nerves with months of bullshit. You're out here damaging people's nerves 
and you want to you want to turn everything into you have always have to bring the focus back to you i'm sick of it yeah it's damaging people's bodies like through but through constant bullying and, and you want to act like you're innocent and like it's no big deal But anyway, anyway, I got to go, you guys. My fellow TIs, take care. Um, I hope you were able to make sense out of that jumble because, to be honest, like, my ADHD is so fucking bad. I can't make sense of what I've said until I go back and listen to the fucking video. But I hope everything that I've said makes sense anyway. You guys take care of yourselves. I love you. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm sorry about this. Hang on.